Hey, it's Bill Jellen. I want to welcome back. We're going to do another Dueling Excel podcast here. Mike Gervin and I had so much fun when I was out in Seattle. Uh, we're going to do, try and do these once a week uh, where I solve a problem and then Mike solves a problem. Uh, today, this problem actually came from Mrs. Excel. Uh, someone sent her this data where she had a whole bunch of records and she had to count how many records had a D, how many records had an M, and how many records had a P. And uh, so I, I attacked this with... Uh, probably the long way around. I just added a, a series of ones over here in the right hand column and I said alright let's turn on the filter and we'll go into the service column and do a text filter and say we want to see how many contain uh, the D. Now a regular count function or a sum function is going to count the hidden rows as well so I'm going to use the subtotal function up here and say that I want to count all of our cells and I'm actually going to type in C2 colon uh, I think it goes down to 200 or so C2 to C205 alright so we have 133 records that have a D and then it's a relative pain I guess to go through and change this each time um, M we see that there's 126 M's and then same thing with P uh, to figure out how many P's there are. So it's functional, uh, it's uh, solved the problem, uh, but I bet that Mike has a different and probably better way to do this. So let's throw it over to Mike. Hey, thanks Mr. Excel and Mrs. Excel for this great question. Hey, Mr. Excel just used the subtotal function and filter. What's great about this method is he didn't have to mess around with the criteria and the syntax for criteria when he used the filter. Now I'm going to show you a slightly different way. We're going to have to do the messy uh, syntax for the criteria, but the advantage is we'll get to see all three results at once. Now I'm going to uh, put a label here. This will be our count column tab, and this will be our criteria. Now, um, our criteria is going to be D. We've got to count D, M, and P. And why don't we use the count if function? Equals count if. And the range is the same. I'm going to click here. Notice that it's not filter. Click in the top cell. Control Shift down arrow to highlight all the way down. And then F4. F4 not only locks it because we're going to need this uh, range to be locked when we copy it down but it'll also it also jumps the screen back in view now comma what is the criteria well for this particular uh, formula it's D now we can't just put in quotes D because it will only look for D's and right now I don't think I see any we need to somehow tell this that there could be some letters afterwards or there could even be some letters before so here's how you do it. Use a wild card. Asterisk means one or more characters. So if we put one before and after, you can have um, characters before and after. Now I've got to put a close parenthesis. And uh, I could copy this down, right? And then quickly change this to an M. Oh, this is already getting uh, uh, time consuming. Much better way to do this. Let's delete this. And we'll edit this formula. No way. We can put the first asterisk in quotes and use the join symbol because notice we have our criteria one cell to our left. So ampersand and then I want to go and get that. Um, hey, look, I'm using my arrow key to try and grab that E2. I'm going to hit the F2 key and that allows me to use my arrow key. You could also type it in. Ampersand because we have to join to that on the right side double quote, asterisk, double quote, close parentheses. What this has done, and if we if you highlight this right here and hit the F9 key, which is evaluate, you can see it gives us the same thing. I'm going to control Z because I don't want that hard coded. Control enter, and then I'm going to double click and send it down. And sure enough, it uh, got it right. I'm going to click in the last cell and hit F2 just to double check. Sure enough, it got that and that. All right, uh, I'm going to throw it back to Mr. Excel. All right, Mike. Great solution. I love that one. Faster way to do my solution. I do Control T in Excel 2007 or Control L in the old 
Excel 2003. And then I need to go in and use the contains filter. It's really important I do that first. So I'll say contains D and we'll go down to the bottom of this data set. Do Alt equals down here and that doesn't put in a sum function. It puts in a subtotal function and I'm going to change the 109 to 103, 3 being count. And you see that we have 133 that contain a D. I can also then come up here and change that text filter to an M and click OK and the formula now updates to show us 126. Uh, so several different ways to go there. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this dueling podcast. Drop us a note, bill at mrexcel.com. Let us know if you think we should keep doing this. I realize it ran long. We'll try and shorten it down next time and keep it down under five minutes. Well, I want to thank you for stopping by on behalf of Mike and myself. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel.